Hey guys, how are you? It's Javi from Have You Heard Title Realty. Today we have a special guest, Pat Murphy from Harrison Murphy LLP. How are we doing today, Pat? Great. How you doing, Javi? I'm doing great, my man. So I guess let's tell the people a little bit about who Pat Murphy is. Who is Pat Murphy? So uh, I'm a real estate attorney. I uh, practice from the New Hampshire border down to the islands, out to Worcester, um, been doing this now. Or re I do real residential, commercial real estate. I uh, represent buyers, sellers, developers. Um, do condo conversions. Been doing this for twenty. Come January, it'll be my twenty third year doing this. Um, do about fifteen fifteen hundred transactions a year. So my home, my primary focus is real estate. Concentrating on just um, how best to represent my clients in trying to navigate the. Uh, real estate world and their experience, making sure that they have a great experience and they're protected throughout. I'm glad to hear it. Guys, you heard it first from Pat. So, <laughs> <laughs> we're going to jump into the first question here, which is what do you see as the current market trend you're seeing? And when do you see as the best time for anyone to buy? Well, I honestly, um, I actually just came from a, a networking event this morning and um with a bunch of realtors, lenders, and we were all in agreement. There was about 20 of us or so there. We're all in agreement that, you know, right now is the best time to buy. Um, I'm sure many people may have heard it out there, but it is true that, you know, people who are listing their properties now are anxious to buy. I mean, anxious to sell, forgive me. Um, you know, they're not waiting for the spring market to come when maybe there's more uh, houses on the market, um, and it's more competitive right now is the time to buy a lot of people, a lot of buyers out there have kind of put away all their, um, aspirations for buying a place, you know, now due to the holidays and everything, but honestly rates are coming down. Um, and there's less competition out of there, out there. So if you're a buyer right now, I mean, it's time to go full board into the market because you're just going to be competing against less buyers, you know, as opposed to having five or maybe 10 offers on a property, you're maybe the only offer, maybe one of two offers. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's not going for a lot over the asking price. Sometimes you're able to get things under and also um, you're able to, you know, keep those contingencies in with inspections and appraisals for the most part. Um, you know, you're able to do things that you're n probably not going to be able to do in the spring market, um, as well as, um, you know, if you're selling and buying at the same time, you know, being able to put um, uh, contingencies in that allow you to do both of those things, which, um, I mean, right now, like if, if, again, if someone is listing their place for sale, mm -hmm. it, you know, they want to sell. So, you know, getting out there and putting in an offer, um, it doesn't hurt you. I mean, it, you know, it's simply what's the worst thing they could do is they say no. So, I mean, if I was a buyer right now, in, in on, honestly, on a personal level, um, I'm on my fifth house at this point. I've always bought around the holidays um, just because of the fact that there's less competition um, and you're and you're able to get things um at a better price point uh, in terms of on average. Um, so yeah, right now is the time to get out there and, and, and make the jump. Yeah, I agree with you hundred percent. I've actually, from what I've seen personally, I know that during the springtime, I've had my buyers have to give up everything. Like, um, like the, the seller doesn't want an inspection, the seller, this, that, this, that. Right. And during the winter time, I'm like, I got to deal with, it's going to close in, in the next month, an inspection, $15,000 back towards closing costs, and plus another rate buy down from the seller. Another deal, you know, next week, um, yeah. 10K back, fully furnished, you know? Right. <laughs> like, and, and especially too, like, you know, in competitive markets, like if you're a buyer with, you know, low money down, you're going for 95% financing, 100% financing, whatever it may be, you're not putting down, you know, a traditional 20%, you, you got less competition. And if you're the only offer on the table, the seller's like, Hey, listen, you know, 
these are the only people offering. Let's accept it. It's close to my price or at my price. Like, let's get it done. Um, mm -hmm. So especially for those people with low money down, you're not competing against people that are offering cash or, you know, have a lot less of a mortgage. Um, and whereas the seller is more apt to accept that offer because it's, you know, better than yours. Um, especially in this market, if you're, if you're not putting down a large chunk of change with your purchase, I mean, yeah, get, get in there now. Um, I can't, I don't know. I've been telling people this now for a month at least. Um, it is like now through January and February, once the end of February comes, that's, that's the start of the spring market. And that's when you start seeing more and more people out there, you know, and if, especially if, all the uh, predictions are correct where they say that rates are going to come down second half of next year. Um, it's only going to get worse. So, and then and typically historically the spring is just, you know, it's crazy out there in terms of trying to get, and that's when people get discouraged, you know? I agree, man. And the crazy thing is I've been doing some studies. I actually did a market video update last week. If you guys haven't seen it, go check it out. It's on my YouTube, but uh Every year since, you know, the last four or five years, there's been less, less, less inventory with higher, higher, higher prices. I don't see it changing next year. There's going to be even yeah. less inventory with even higher prices. So this is the best right. time to buy. Actually, right now, the winter months, I've always gotten the best deals for my clients during these months. Right. Yeah. hundred percent. I mean, yeah. If you're, if you're interested, if you're serious about buying and you're not out there right now, get out there. I mean, that's yeah. all I can say. hundred percent. <laughs> so we'll segue into the next question. We actually talked about it briefly, buying and selling. So how do you recommend buying and selling at the same time from a legal perspective? Yeah. So, I mean, especially now, like just going back to what we were just saying, you know, less competition means you're able to put more things into your offer with contingencies and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And when you're the only offer on the table, um, you're able to, I'm seeing more and more people getting their offer accepted subject to them selling their house. So which that means is um, if you can't get your house that you're selling under contract, you're not obligated to buy the next place. Mm -hmm. So it's the best of both worlds. You know, you're not, you're not obligated to purchase it because you can't sell your house because you need those funds to purchase. Um, and whereas at the same time too, if buyers are out there and you're the seller, you can also make what you want to do is, try to make your sale contingent upon you buying the other place. So you're protected throughout the entire transaction. If you don't buy the next place, you're not making yourself homeless because you have to sell the place because you don't have that contingency in there. And on yep. the flip side, if you don't sell, you don't have to buy. So, you know, if either transaction, whether it's your sale or your purchase doesn't go through, you're not on the hook for going through either of those. And right now, like we just said, the market is less competition and whatnot you're more apt to get those contingencies accepted mm -hmm. and you're more able to make sure that you're not making yourself homeless or you're not having to carry two mortgages. You yeah. know, um, it, it's, it, it, this is the time to buy it because you're not going to be able to do that come the spring when, you know, people are making offers without mortgages, without mortgage contingencies, without inspection contingencies, you know, adding that additional home sale contingency, um, is more difficult, if not impossible, to get you know accepted come the spring market. You exactly, know? exactly. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's tell them actually a little bit of hack. We'll give you a little bit of tip right here. Uh, rent back situation, Pat. Can you tell them about a rent back situation? Oh, hundred percent. So, um, you know, use and occupancies. Or you know, what we do is it allows you can do a use and occupancy um, when you're purchasing a primary residence for up to fifty nine days. Um, with it still being an owner occupied interest rate for your mortgage. So with mortgages, you get a better interest rate if you're going to be occupying the property as your primary residence, as opposed to um, using it as an investment property. Uh, with an investment property, you're going to get a higher interest rate. The mm -hmm. thought is, is that God forbid you come into some hard financial times, you're going to, if it's your primary residence, you're going to do everything in your power to stay there versus if you do come into some hard, some hard times and it's investment property, you're more apt to walk away from that property and let it go into foreclosure. So the banks, what they do is the, the risk that they take on with the investment properties, they build that into the rate. So you have a higher interest rate. Mm -hmm. So if you're buying a place as a primary residence, you can 
um, or you're selling your place and the people buying it are doing it as a primary residence. One of the beautiful things about, you know, maybe buying a property that needs a little bit of work is that you're able to sell your house and get what we call a use and occupancy, which means you are allowed to use and occupy the property uh, following the closing, even though you sold it, you're no longer the owner up to 59 days. Um, and so that would allow you, if you're buying a place that needs some work is you sell your house, you're able to get painters in there, flooring guys, get work done to the new place without having to live through that construction. Um, in, or whereas it, so you could do it up to 59 days to allow you to get those contractors in there, or just so you're not trying to sell your house in the morning and buy the house in the afternoon, have to deal with trying to move out of both properties, close on both properties, get them on record. Mm -hmm. You can sometimes have, you know, a couple of days after closing that you're allowed to stay, or maybe a week after closing, two weeks after closing that you're allowed to stay. And typically what happens is with this market is buyers are so anxious to get a place under agreement that oftentimes if it's only for a week or two, they'll allow you to use and occupy the property after the closing free of charge. Um, the only thing that would be done is there'd be some money held back at closing just to make sure you do vacate. But once you do vacate, you get the money back. Um, you know, allowing you to stay there means that you don't have to try and pull your hair out moving all on the same day and making yourself go crazy. Um, you can, move at your leisure, so to speak, in that you have a week or two weeks, you know, and again, you can, maybe you get some painting done in that time, um, but you're allowed to stay there. Uh, if you go up to the 59 days or if the buyer wants reimbursement for the time that you're staying there, typically what we limit um, the cost of renting back to is what the buyer's PITI, we call it principal interest taxes and insurance. So, Take the buyer's monthly mortgage payment, divide that by 31, you come up with a per diem. That would be your per diem or your, you know, figure it your night at the hotel stay cost. Yeah. Um, your per diem to stay at the property for that amount of time. And that money is then just deducted from your proceeds. So you pay the seller, I mean, the buyer, forgive me, you pay the buyer back, they're out of pocket. So they're not out of any money. Um, so that, you know, they're, you're staying there after the closing. Now, on the buy side, a good way to get your offer accepted and the people want a use and occupancy agreement, a good way to get your offer accepted without having to add more money onto the bottom line mm -hmm. is if you're buying. So today's December 7th, right? Okay. Today's December 7th. So if you close today, um, the bank's going to collect interest from the 7th up until the end of the month from you. That means your first mortgage payment isn't going to be due until February 1st okay. because mortgages are always paid in arrears. You know, you don't pay on the first of the month you're about to use. You always pay on the first of the month you're about to just used. Okay. So that February mortgage payment covers January's interest. So if you're a buyer and your seller wants to take a use in occupancy, you're really not going to feel the pinch, so to speak, with that first mortgage payment until February 1st. So mm -hmm. if they say December 7th, they want to close, they want to stay there until January 7th. Since you're not paying any money out of pocket on January 1st, a, a good way to get your offer accepted is by allowing the seller to live there from December 7th up to January 7th rent free. Because what you're doing is you're allowing the seller to pay off their mortgage on the 7th. So all their interest, all their taxes, everything stops for them on that day. They get their money then and they get another month worth of mortgage. So if their mortgage payment's three, $4,000 a month, that's three, $4,000 more they made because you let them live there for 30 days. They didn't have to make a mortgage payment for that time. Yeah. So you're really tacking that onto the bottom line for the seller. Um, and you as a buyer, you're not making your first mortgage payment until February 1st. So you're not really feeling as though, hey, I'm spending money because all the money's paid at closing. So it's a good way to kind of get your offer accepted, separate yourself because if the seller is looking for a use and occupancy agreement, more people and it's for 30 days most of the buyers out there will say okay yeah i'll give you 30 days but you got to reimburse me my out of pockets but if and you're not really <laughs> if you really don't have any out of pocket till february yeah. 1st you really don't have anything right so yeah. why not let them stay there for the 30 days you still are holding back money to make sure they do vacate so you're protected in that sense yeah you know that that if they don't leave or if 
there's damage done to the property. There's money held in escrow mm -hmm. that can be used towards fixing those things that are damaged or paying. There, there's penalties if they do stay over in the use and occupancy agreement that we have signed. So there's yeah. a formal legal agreement that gets signed with the use and occupancy that says this isn't a landlord tenant relationship. We're not you're not going to have to go to housing court to evict these people. The use and occupancy agreements that we have signed state that this is just a license, meaning that can be revoked. It gets revoked on the day that the use and occupancy term ends. So you mm -hmm. don't have to go into housing court, get people evicted, which can take months, uh, if not years sometimes. Yep. It's actually a license where you can go to the sheriff's office saying, hey, they only had a license to sell, to use this property up until this date, and they're still there. Therefore, we need you to get them out of the house. Um, so it protects you in that sense, in terms of you're not getting into a landlord tenant relationship. So you know, again, like if you're not physically coming out of pocket with any mortgage payments, it's a great way, another advantage, another tool you can use to get your offer accepted by allowing that seller to stay there rent free. Mm -hmm. In you know, once you do, once they do vacate, then you go in, you check to make sure, okay, yeah, all this stuff is out of there. There's no damage to the property. And once you confirm that, then the money that's being held back gets released back to the seller. Yeah. So uh, I see people doing that all the time right now in terms of use and occupancy agreements. More often than not, the people that are giving the free use and occupancy term are the ones that are getting their offer accepted versus the one asking for reimbursement for their out-of-pockets. Yeah. You know, if you're asking to stay until February 30th and you're making your first mortgage payment until February 1st, OK, then you say, all right, we'll give you the up until February 1st to live there. But after February 1st, then it's, um, you know, you got to reimburse me my out of pockets. Yeah. You know, because you are physically coming out. You know, guys, this is so much information, Pat. Dude, thank you so <laughs> much for jumping on. I, I learned some stuff. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, that's what I'm here for. You know, I, yeah. I, I tell people. I, I, I tell my clients all the time, the only stupid question is the one you don't ask. I'm here to answer your questions, you know, days, nights, weekends. Uh, you know, I see this all day, every day. This is all I do. So, you know, I have referral partners, clients, lenders. People call me all the time to say, hey, listen, you know, I want to put an offer on this place. I want to make it the most competitive. How can I go about, you know, putting the wording in my offer to make sure that my offer gets accepted versus some other offer that's coming in. And, you know, I do it all the time for, for clients and referral partners and everybody like, Hey, listen, okay. Yeah. Use an occupancy agreement. This is the way you word it. Or, you know, you, you want to position yourself in a great way or on the, on the flip side, like when you have clients who are selling, you know, Hey, can you, I got three offers. Can you look to tell me like, what's your thought on which is the best one? Can you tell me the pitfalls and all? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's all I do. I mean, that's, that's what I'm here for. You know, I see these things all day, every day. And so it kind of, I can see where the trends are going a little bit and kind of maybe a little bit ahead of the curve um, versus, you know, kind of being behind the curve here. I mean, you have so much experience, you know, yeah, right? the business. it's, I, I don't feel that old, but I guess I am. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually my birthday tomorrow. So maybe I am going to start smokes. feeling old. Yeah. Well, you a happy birthday, man. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> well, guys, thank you so much for hopping on. Thank you, Pat, for being our guest today. We learned so much today. It was Thanks great. for having me. Yeah, guys. If you guys Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Sorry? Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Oh, dude. It, it was a great pleasure. Guys, if you want to know more about Pat, if you guys want to chat with him about legal matters, anything real estate related, want him to be your attorney in real estate, his information is linked below. Just go to the bottom of the page and find it out. But guys, until then, I'll chat with you guys soon. Pat, signing out. Good seeing you. Happy holidays, everybody. Happy holidays.